Hi there everybody, just wanted to make a quick video on, on some parts that came in for the scat pack. And uh, th this is one I had mentioned a little earlier that I wasn't sure about if I liked the look. But uh, since then I've seen some newer uh, 2019 B5 Blue Charger scat packs that I really like and I kind of like this look. So, I mean, in the parts, in the scheme of things, aren't very expensive. Like, I, I got this kit from uh, Steve White uh, off of his uh, eBay uh, store, but he, he, he also has a, uh, a big website. He's one of the big retailers for Dodge Chrysler Jeep parts and stuff that you can get parts from. And he, uh, that, that, that store offers this kit, which I got here, which includes the the main grill assembly itself, the new 2019 Charger with the snorkels. So I got that on right there. And then includes these these pieces right here, which are the actual things that fit that actually will fit in here. So I, I got the, these two snorkel pieces part, this top part. You can just get, if you want, you can just get this and the two snorkel pieces, the upper part of the grill. And it's it, it's a little bit cheaper, but it, for like thirty, I think thirty or forty bucks, thirty bucks more, you get the bottom matching grill. So the the bottom is different on the newer ones; it matches the top on the older ones too. So if you want them to match, you have to get both, and it's not that much more. I think for this whole kit, I think I paid one hundred and thirty five bucks for everything, and plus shipping is like you know thirty or something, so something like that. But so I got the bottom and the top with the nostrils for about 135 bucks and so it came in this nice you know tall box here and really kind of cool this this sticky bubble wrapping that has all the mopar stuff on it so it is an actual part you know it's really it really came packaged pretty well so uh i'm gonna i'm gonna make a video i i haven't really researched on how to really pull the bumper off on these cars to do this you just basically pull the bumper off you know pop out there's you know clips uh clips on the bottom there on the top clips on the top here and you just basically pop the old one out, pop this one in. And another thing that I'm gonna try to do is, uh, see, I, did, I you notice like a lot of people, you can tell that have done this retrofit, they didn't get the Scat Pack B, which is, which is, I, you, a lot of you might not know, it's because they had some production issues on the badges not being up to quality, so they had to change uh, vendors and stuff like that. So they're extremely hard to find. These newer ones, because they, they, they come with a little bracket that actually clips down into these circles, and it has a scat pack. And it seems to just be the scat pack one, because now they're starting to come out, and you can find them for sale now. But they're really expensive. At the time of this video, I checked, and for the scat pack emblem to click in here, it was I think it's 130 bucks, 133 bucks, uh, including shipping. So I think 115 plus the shipping. But... You can get, like, if, if you go out and just get, uh, like, the SRT Hellcat logo, which you would think would be more because the Hellcat's a higher brand and people might want to rip it off. And that one's, I think, 80 bucks. And if you get a date, if you're looking for the Daytona one, that one's like 50 bucks. So it's ridiculous that just the Scat Pack ones are 130 bucks for a little logo that clips on here. So I've seen someone else do it, and I'm going to try it before because that's just ridiculous for a logo. And and it, but it's going to bug me not having it up front here. A lot of people just, so if you see, you know, a scat pack, but just the grill and no logos, it chances are they just didn't want to buy the stupid emblem or they couldn't get it at the time. So I'm going to try, I've seen someone else do it. I'm going to try to take the emblem off of the old uh, grill, which it mounts a different way. It's got clips on the emblem itself. So I think if, if I cut those, grind those clips off square, and then I can kind of maybe grind a rough spot onto the back of the emblem and maybe get some JB weld or something and just weld on some kind of a flat nut to, or flat uh, bolt to the back that bolts through here and then get just get some washers. I don't know, right? Maybe between two of these washers and nuts and just, you know, in, in maybe maybe not tighten them super because they don't need to be that tight because it's not going to go anywhere and plus if you're driving fast it's going to be pushing there it's going to be pushing against it so it's not going anywhere and so if i just get some washers and some nuts and just you know if the jb weld is good enough against the back of the badge i should just be able to you know stick it you know where the normal one would go right about you know hearsay so so that's what i'm thinking i'm going to do i, I i'm going to Try to, because that's, 
it's, it's the same badge, only it just mounts a little different. It's stupid. That's 133 bucks for the stupid badge. So I'm going to try to get mine to work. It's, it's worth the extra work for 130. I just don't, I just can't drop 133 bucks. So, so that's what I got going on. I just got in. So I'm going to be working on this later. Um, uh, I'm going to try to videotape it just to, you know, get, because I've never pulled off the bumper before. It'd be kind of fun to, to see how it, ha how it works and how it can, how it comes off if it comes off easy. But, but, uh, yeah, I just wanted to show the parts I'm going to be doing this. Like I said, this is from Steve White, you know, the dealership. So all these parts together was about 130, you know, five bucks plus shipping. Shipping was kind of expensive because it's kind of a bulky box. And uh, so, yeah, so that, that that's what we're going to do next. We're going to throw it on the car. Okay, everybody, uh, we are just, uh, we're just out here in the garage. Um, just got the car pulled in, so we're going to work on taking apart this guy up here now. Um, and just going to pop this whole bump. This bumper is going to come off. The headlights, I believe, stay. Uh, all of this whole bumper system comes off. I'm gonna try to get this badge off and then uh, make that work with the new With the uh, <clears throat> with the new grill somehow I don't know how but maybe with some bolts or something I'll try to but but step one we're gonna do we're gonna get this thing on the jacks I got the jack over there. Uh, I got my jack stands or my uh, Got my jack stands down there my jack there. I got my uh, the pinch weld jack thing, the magnetic one from ZL1 add-ons, I got that over there. So I'm going to get this up onto some jack stands, pull the wheels off, and then that lets us get to these clips in here. And also there's some bolts uh, right around here, I believe. I watched a video on it, but uh, didn't really, there wasn't really, well, I didn't have much audio on during it. So we'll see how that goes. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Pop the hood here, because we're going to need that open. We're going to need that guy. The hood, because uh, once you get inside here, you have to take all of these different little push pin clips out. Those have got to come out. A bunch of them on the top, a bunch of them on the bottom. Another reason why you want to jack this up to uh, be able to get under it reasonably well. I don't have much space in here. I hope that's enough. I think that'll be enough to pull it away. So, because uh, right now I, it's, I, I could open up the garage door and back it up, but it's super bright and it just would get hot like that. So, and I could back it up a tiny bit, but I'm, I'm fine. So, so I'm going to get her jacked up and uh, get my ZL1 add-ons uh, there it is. This guy here is a lifesaver. This thing rules. It's got magnets in here, along with some looks like maybe Delrin plastic or something like that. So yeah, just it just it, it, and the magnets are are great. You just slip it up into that pinch hole, it goes thunk. It fits right in there, and you get your jack and just go right up with it. So I'm gonna do that, and then uh, I'm gonna need my uh, impact here. Um, gee, I wonder what I did with my, not very organized right now. Ooh, I got one battery left on there. I'll grab a new battery. And then I'll grab, is this my socket? Yep, that's the one. This is a uh, 22 mil. That's what to pull off the tires with. Got that, that. And then also something else I did uh, did purchase a couple days ago. I don't know how long it'll take them to be in, but I, I, I said earlier with these tires, these are, uh, these are BF Goodrich, uh, comp two all seasons. They're really, they're really good tires are 245 since they fit on the normal scat pack wheels. They're really dirty right now, but they're, uh, they're 245s and, uh, they're great. They have tons of tread left. I, I originally said I was going to run these all of the summer, use them up, burn them up, whatever run my winters and then I was going to buy some, I don't know, uh, wider because of the, these winter wheels I have over here. Pull this down. Because these winter tires and wheels that I ordered, these are nine and a half. So they're wider than the factory scat packs. And right now these have my winter tires on. These are Yokohama. And they're 255s. Well, I, I was gonna, so I was gonna use those up, burn them up, 
and then uh, just take off these winter tires, put them on these factory scat pack rims, and then take these guys, which I like a lot. I love the bronze color. They fit. They're kind of they're kind of like Hellcat replicas, kind of. They're not quite as wide. These are only nine and a half, so I, I can fit a two seventy five on here real good, and that should be just fine for my needs. But that's what I was gonna do. But I I, I really like these rims too much, and especially if I want to take. I want to go to some car shows and stuff during the summer. I want these, I love these wheels on here. I love the color. I love how they match with the car. So I ordered, um, I actually, there was a, there was a for sale on a, a Turo AZ850s, which are really common with the scat packs, muscle cars, because they're super cheap. They do pretty well in terms of grip and uh, wet performance. You know, they're really good tires all around. That's what reviews have said. Um, they last a decent amount of time, I think, but, but we'll find out. I'm just going to use them for summer anyway. So I, I ordered some of those. There was on, they were on sale for $98 a piece for two seventy five forty dollars uh, ZR20s for $98 a piece. So I, I had to jump on it. I ordered four of them. Once they get in, I'm going to mount them to, these, to my nice Hellcat, kind of Hellcat replica rims. But I love how these look. And so I'm going to mount those Aturos to there, throw those on. I'm going to take these uh, BF Goodrich ones. I'm going to probably sell them because they have a ton, ton. They have a good amount of tread left on them. I haven't burned the crap out of them. They have a good amount of tread, and they're just for 245s. These are great tires. Uh, I think the best zero to sixty time I've done on these tires is uh, I think 4.2, 4.3 seconds around there. And this is a totally factory Hellcat or factory Hellcat, factory Scat Pack here. So. I'm going to probably pull these off. They're, they're all 245. I think they're 245, 45s. Uh, I'm not sure, but I can't see. But that's, So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull those off, sell them. I'm going to get those Aturos. And I, I want to see how good. I mean, $98 a tire for 275 tires. That's crazy. So I'm, I'm going to put those on. I'm going to see how. I'm really interested to see how they perform compared to these. I mean, these are very good tires. So we're going to. So that, that's the plan for that. Once those come in, I'm going to have those mounted to these rims right here so okay so enough enough blabbering here so i'm gonna get this up in the air get the tires off and then i will uh i'll check back with you okay i'm back i just got the wheels off uh wheels are off all oh, that's fine i'm on jack tens you can see where i put i didn't put the jack tens up from i actually put them if you can see underneath right there right up against here there's some nice steel there so i did that for the front so now i can get under there to get that windage tray kind of thing off underneath but so what i believe we need to do next wheels are off we need to start by pulling all of these little push pins here and i got one of these i also i think it's uh, right here yeah i got a metal one too but i'm going to stick with the plastic as long as i can i just don't want to scratch everything up but uh so we're going to start apparently this just kind of comes out somehow yeah there we go yeah okay that just comes out i don't know why you would even really need to take that out I don't think you, there's no reason you would need to really even take that out. So whatever, you don't need to take that out. But. So I'm going to start pulling these. See, they have a little slot, almost like specifically for a screwdriver. They have a little slot, like I don't know if you can see it on the GoPro, but right on one side there's like a little slot to just get something in to pry them. And once you get them up, you can just kind of pull them out like that. But uh, yeah, so once you get going here, you can pop through them pretty quick that little slot to get something in so even if you just have a small flathead screwdriver you should be able to get that in without damaging stuff two three there's there we go all right all of those guys oh shoot try not to lose all these guys got all those guys okay yeah all these everything seems loose here now I believe we need to go into the wheel wells where I'm going to take this guy with. I think that's where we need to attack next to bring down some of the wheel well ones. Yep, and there are a bunch in here. As you can see, they're all over the place. These guys are everywhere. This looks like a different kind I'm going to have to get with my metal one. But, uh, yeah, more of these guys. a little bit harder. Oh yeah, 
Yeah, see, these are a different kind of. I, I'm not going to use my. I'm going to use my metal one for these guys. But as far as uh, all these ones with the little red notches cut out, I'm going to use my plastic, use my plastic one. See, I, I now I, I I don't believe you have to take these out because you just need to peel this to the side to get up to the bolts here. But I'll take them and just see if it gives me a better angle at stuff. Over here. Hey, what are you barking at? Okay, let's get this metal guy off. Yeah, metal one means business. There we go. See, now I don't know if this guy needs to come out too. Whatever, I'll take it out. And this guy is just one of those Christmas tree ones that always break. I'm gonna grab my. Okay. Yep. Oh, yeah. oh, that's way easier. Yep. Okay. I'm not sure if these need to come off too. Pro I mean, probably. Why not just take them all off? Actually, this plastic one is awesome. Well, the plastic one here is actually better than the metal one. It's got more of. You can get more leverage on it. And try not to break them. All right, so, so that's loose now. So that's still connected to that under. Okay, that's good. Uh, we'll get at this guy up here. Come on, come on, baby doll. There we go. All right, so this guy, um, I just want to do one up there. Actually, well, because the ones I saw, this just gets peeled over. But as you can see here, if I take this guy out up there, this one and that one, it's that whole wheel liner should come out and make things heck of a lot easier. So why don't I just take the rest of them out? Oh, I felt something fall, so something fell somewhere. All right, so theoretically now this guy should just come out somehow. Okay. Not sure how it disconnects from the other side, but Kind of got a. You can look up there. It's got a little screw that attaches the fender liner to the other one. So, here, let's. I got it mostly out of the way here. So, let's just pull this. Kind of wedge this over here. Okay, wedge that over there. And this is what we're looking at now. So this is what we're looking at to find out. <sighs> good view. I don't know how well this is coming across on the camera, but okay. So there's your bumper. And then uh, everything's good here. It's kind of connected there. So we need to start disconnecting lights and stuff. That's what we need to do. So, oh, so this has got one of those pins. It doesn't need to slide this way. Yep, it needed to slide towards the outside of the wheel well. Yep. See, it's got this clip right here. And it, it was up, it needed to slide back, so it needs to slide towards the wheel. So that should be all I need to disconnect from the bumper itself. This stuff all should stay. No, oh, no, there's a side marker light thing here. So yeah, the only thing else going to the bumper itself is the, uh, this guy. This guy right here. Got to get that, that one corner marker disconnected. And then there are, yep, the bolts are up here. 
and the bolts are up here to take off. So that's what I'm going to do next. So I will check back after I get that stupid plug undone and after I get those bolts taken off. All right, everybody, uh, I'm just back here. And whatever I did, remember I did that on the passenger side, I did that exact same thing on the driver side, came around, and then there's the, uh, the one bolt up here, and then the two that go up to here, and then just those weird, you know, those plastic clips, and then this one goes to your, like I said earlier, this one, this one goes to your fog lights, so this is forward, you gotta click it back towards the rear of the car, and then unplug it, and then this guy, you just stick a screwdriver in here to pry this part up and it pulls right out. So those are my only two connections. And the headlights, like I said, stay in place. And your whole bumper just pulls right off. It does, which worried me. I kind of thought it would have those like clips that you would have to <laughs> yank on it and snap them all. There was really no clips at all. It was all bolts, so it just slid right off. So I'm gonna pull this grill off. It looks like there's actually Looks like, wow, there's actually like little screws on the bottom here. That's kind of, I, I just thought it would be plastic clips the whole way with this guy, but nope, um, up here, up here just looks like plastic clips. So up here, piece of cake. So that's what I'm gonna work on next. I'm gonna start popping these clips everywhere and unscrewing all of these little guys. So that'll be next. Hey there, everybody. So. So this is, uh, yeah, it's kind of on my counter, but so here is the grill for the new uh, scat pack. Right in here, like this. And so this right here is the old scat pack front emblem off the 2015 to 20, I guess it would be 18 scat packs. And it has, on the back, it has, one of them broke off there, but there's a, there's a clip there, and then right over here, here's another clip, and then there's two push pins that are both broken off. I broke them off right here and in that spot. And they push through and then there's just a metal thing that hooks on that just kind of presses on to that, uh, to that straight spiky kind of thing. And that's what holds it in. So I think I, I, think I should be able to use this. I was look, looking at some pictures and so when you look at the new scat pack grill, if you go from the bottom over here, if you go one, two, three, and then that's where the B lines up with over here. So th this hole, the B has to be in this hole. So if you take it and go about one, two, three, I can't see, right about here. So the, this is where the B is at on the new ones. So that's about where the B is at. So w when you get the new logos, they, are, they kind of look like the same thing, only they come with little circular things, three little circular things like this that go in this order and they press in and, and hook and they're, they hook to the badge. So I don't know how that does, but I, I don't really want to pay for that. So what I think I can do here is I will, that side's already ground on, so I need to trim this, I'll knock this off and grind it flat. And then I'm gonna go pick up some JB Weld or some epoxy and just take a little, like a bolt and, and epoxy it in here and then epoxy it over here and then just have a washer on the other end that hooks on the back side of this and a nut. And as long as, I, I don't know how I'm gonna exactly get it to not move around, but I suppose once I, as long as that epoxy getting holds, I, can, I should be able to tighten it down a decent amount. Not too much, but just enough to keep it from moving, I think. Anyway, well, it's worth a shot, you know. So, so you mean? So I think this is gonna work. I I don't I don't I think it won't look like garbage either. So that's what that is. So and then I'll take you outside here to, to give you a look at everything so far. So here's the bumper. As you can see down here, there's not much light, but I got the bottom part put in. That part was not very hard. I can show you with the old one here. The, the bottom one's pretty easy. All it is, is, is these little, uh, they're seven millimeter bolts all the way across. So you get it that from the front side, you reach up there and just reach up it from the bottom there and spin those out. Those are all seven mils. And then on the other side, these are just poking through and you just, again, seven millimeters all the way across, loosen those up and then the thing just pushes right out, piece of cake. Now this guy on the other hand, this, uh, this one, this one was a little bit tougher. 
So here's uh, here here's the old one. I'll give you a look here. So here's the old guy, and see, yep, there there's where the scat pack mount mounts right over here to the thing. But this is this was a little bit more of a pain because there's see as you can see up here, there's these clips that go all the way across on the top and on the bottom. So you have to loosen up those clips. But um, see if I get this up here like this. As you can see, once this gets up here, these posts, they kind of fit in behind this. So you have to kind of bend these posts up and pop them up over these. And then that'll let you, or otherwise you can't just pull out the tabs once these, are, once these are pushed up. You can't just pull them out, they run into these blocks. So you have to kind of bend it up while pulling out on that and just work your way, bend another one up, pull, bend another one up and pull. So that was kind of a pain, but uh, it did pop out. So, and here, here's the old one right up here. Uh, dirty, you know, it's a 2015, so it's pretty dirty. All right, hey there everybody. I just got back from Home Depot. So this is what I'm gonna try to do with this setup. Okay, so here is my, this is my scat pack badge from the 2015. I did, I clipped off that clip and you can see I sanded down the parts where I'm going to JB weld the stainless steel bolt in. So I think this should work pretty good. So here's, here's what I'm gonna do. I have my scat pack badge there. I picked up, uh, let's see, where'd they go? Oh, right over here. Here's what, I picked up some quarter inch by 20 by one and a quarter inch length. Uh, these are some uh, stainless steel uh, machine screws, kind of like this. I kind of went with the flat ones and then it's got, you know, this uh, Phillips pattern in which I hope takes some glue. And I'm gonna basically just, uh, you know, stick it right in them and I'm gonna glue the crap out of it right in the middle of the B there. I'm gonna JB weld the crap. So, so this is what I'm gonna do. So there, I have my I have my a stainless steel bolt there, and then I got these kind of, uh, I forget what they're called, they're like a tooth washer, you know, to really grip into there. And I did that so that if I, when I put my badge in, what I'm gonna try to do is, you know, like, like I said earlier, it's the, the third rung up, one, two, three, so I'm gonna put it in here, okay? So, I'm gonna put it in there, and what I'm gonna try to do is get it close to this edge, to close to the inside. And if I keep it close to the inside, if I keep it close to the inside, let me grab another one of these. If I keep it close to that inside, I can get this to grip onto a bunch of the plastic on the other side. So this will, so this will, so this, sorry, I'm off camera, but so this will grip into that plastic and hopefully will stop it from moving around once I tighten it down. So after I get that in, after I get that on, so this is going to be in the badge. It's going to be stuck to the badge. And then so I have this guy to grip that plastic to grip and use the teeth to sink into it. Then I got a washer to kind of uh, to make it so that this nut, because the nut's too small, it would just go through. So I got the washer. And then I have a nylock nut. So, um, so I got this. So this is the first one, the quarter inch by 20 by a one and a quarter inch uh, flathead Phillips. Okay. And then I got over here. The three eighths inch uh, external tooth uh, washer looking thing. Okay, got one of those, and then I got the the quarter inch by one inch stainless steel washers, and then at the end I got the quarter inch by twenty coarse threaded. I, I could have gone fine thread. I don't know why I just picked coarse, but I got these nylock nuts to kind of lock it in. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Oh, and then I got some JB Quick Weld here which should be more than enough for it. But so I sanded down the spots that I am going to use. And then I'm going to, like I said, JB weld this guy right here in the middle. And one kind of, it should be by the C, I believe. Uh, let's see there, I got it sanded. Yeah, it should be kind of by the C I'm gonna go. And then once I get that, that, that should be able, so I'm gonna have the middle of the B be where the bolt is. So I'm gonna to try to have that right at this lip here so that middle will sit right about here. And that should be right in the middle and I should be able to tighten that down, hopefully in the JB weld will hold. But that is my plan to start with here. 
So that is what uh, I'm going to go forward with and give it a shot. Okay, so I just stirred up some of the uh, good old JB Weld. It smells fantastic in here. And uh, after I sanded those down, this is what I got right here. I really gooped it up like crazy because I and I after I I really dipped it in there to get it all in those Phillips heads, and then I spun it around in some and dipped it in there and set it, and then I kind of molded some around it to kind of help. But uh, so that's what they're looking like now. It says it cures in six hours or so, but I'll probably leave it overnight and then give it a shot tomorrow and see if I can get it straight and lined up. All right, back the next day after my kind of Jerry Rig JB Weld job on those bolts on the Scat Pack logo. And uh, I'll give you a look, but it turned out great actually. If you can get, if I, you can see in there, I don't know if you can really see, but in there, the, you can see the JB Weld, I left it overnight about 11, so probably, you know, about maybe 18 hours, 17 hours. And it was rock hard when I got, when I uh, tested it this morning and I moved around those bolts and they didn't move anywhere. So then I stuck them through and they, they lined up really well with what I wanted them to. See, I wanted to try to get them, up, if you look kind of up here, like I wanted to try to get them in this very uh, corner piece where it narrows down so I could get those those uh, rid or those uh, what do they call them? Those washers with the ridges that do it'll dig in here. I wanted to try to get them in there, and it actually worked out really well with the with the placement where I placed it in the middle of the scat pack B, and then right about at the between the S, uh, between the T. Let me check here. Between the S and the C, between the S and the C is where I stuck this guy. And it happened to work out great. So when I put it through, they both were facing pretty much, you know, the inside of these ovals, which worked out great. So I slid it in there and then I, you really can't see it from this angle at all. But in there is one of those here. I'll, I'll grab the package here. So inside of there, I put one, you know, like I said in my previous video, I put one of these guys. To, to really grip into that plastic to stop it from sliding around if there is going to be any movement. So I put one of those guys in and then one of these bigger washers and then a nylock nut to really lock it in. And I didn't tighten them down too far just to where I felt like it was starting to push in on the plastic. And uh, and, and it's so far, you know, I, I, I've, I've tried to move it around and it won't, it's not going anywhere. And actually, I didn't really even have to adjust it left or right. It seems fairly, you know, straight actually if you look across the top of the scat pack see how it how it goes pretty much through the middle of the circle and then the b kind of goes through that middle of that other circle so it's i mean it's and i tried to back up a long ways to make sure it's pretty square so i, I can't really tell a difference so from a distance you can kind of see that's and it, and i took a picture from a new one and kind of zoomed on in to, to get the placement exactly right about what the new ones are so I'm really happy with between all those bolts I get. I got two bolts and then the washers and then the the um the the serrated washers and then the nuts. It was like 12 bucks or 13 bucks to reuse your old badge with this new uh with this new grill which is amazing over the 130 bucks for a new badge when this one's perfectly fine. So it was really easy. I just got those things off of a uh, or uh, from Home Depot, and I just used the JB Weld to weld them into the the new thing and, and bolted it down, and it seems to work fantastic. So I'm going to throw this back on the car, and then we'll see how it looks once I get it all back together. Hey, uh, back everybody. So I got everything buttoned up. It was a pain in the butt to get all those little tiny plastic clips back together and get them in the spots, and and there was a part in the wheel well where one, the fender liner is supposed to go underneath the the under tray and I put it in front and then realize after the fact that it was I stupidly put it in front but uh, so I had to take the bottom pins out to slide that wheel well liner underneath behind that front tray so I did that got everything back everything popped into place just fine and then the scat pack logo looks pretty straight here you know it looks pretty good everything looks good I am I guess I, I, I am glad I got the bottom half put in as well, because I mean, it does match really well. But uh, there it is, the 2019 
uh, front fascia on, on my 2015. And so I pretty much have it matching all the right now because I have the Scat Pack logo from the 2019 on the back. So it is a more aggressive look with the nostrils. And uh, I did not uh, cut that piece out like I thought it was here. If I if I do end up getting it, it does it does go down right right on the inside here. It goes down I think to somewhere. I'm not sure. Maybe the brake duct or something. I'm not sure. But if I do get that Hellcat airbox, it, it the front's not difficult to take off and back on to do it again it's it's not that bad like if i did it again now i could have it off in probably 15 to 20 minutes but uh if i do do it i mean i don't know if it's worth you know the 150 bucks or whatever it is you know for that minimal horsepower and just a tiny bit of time it cools down your ambient temperature but we'll see at some point i might get bored you know when i do it but yeah this is this, so this is the result it turned out really well all the it was a little bit of a pain to get the upper part clipped back into the clips because they're pretty firm clips so you really got to press it while holding the bumper because it's kind of floppy the bumper is without that center piece in so you really got to hold one side of the bumper while pushing in to get it to click in all the way and uh my scat pack logo here looks pretty straight you know and it's it's not gonna go anywhere hopefully so i'll update you if it like falls off or anything like that but that was a big savings of over 100 bucks just to reuse my other logo so and, and, and I was worried you could see the washers and stuff behind it, but you really can't see anything. So anyway, that, that was pretty much it. Uh, hope this helps some people out that, you know, maybe want to reuse their badges, that this works so well for me, so far at least. We'll see how that JB Weld holds. But I didn't really wrench down too tight on that, so it, the, the JB Weld should be just fine. So this is how it ended up. And... Uh, um, that, that'll be it for now. I'll probably make another video when my Aturo tires come in that I can put on my gold uh, wheels over there. I'll probably make another video. I'm really curious to see how there's a, those Aturos work, how they feel, how they handle. And so that'll probably be the next video.